I'm Mitch Peacock. And what do I do? Well, I'm a maker, mainly in wood. So I call myself a woodworker. How did I get into making? Well, I guess I started at an early age. I was always interested in taking things apart to see how they worked. And of course, making was the, uh, what I had to do to put them back together again. And when I was a kid, we were always, uh, always doing things, building go-karts, bikes, awesome machines, deadly machines, but it was great fun. Not like today's kids, I feel sorry for them, always in front of screens and never getting out into the real world. So I had a great start, a really happy childhood. Why did I take to woodworking later on in life? Well, I guess it really started off in childhood because uh, I enjoyed it when I was at school and the projects that I used to do at home. But academically, I was more into the sciences and mathematics. And so I followed a career path that took me into the telecommunications industry. Having achieved a degree, I was a project manager for many years. But uh, in childhood, in my late teens, I uh, started suffering with dreadful stomach aches and was eventually diagnosed with Crohn's disease, which is becoming more prevalent these days, but back then it was quite rare. And for many years I carried on in the telecoms industry and I was constantly getting ill with Crohn's. And in fact, almost every year of my career, I needed to go in for major surgery. And in the end, I was just told, hey, give up work. It's the only way you're gonna stay alive. So I did that and of course, as they say for most people when they retire, if you don't take up a hobby or something, then you'll die pretty soon. And I looked around, tried different things, things that I'd enjoyed earlier in life, and woodworking always came out tops. So I started to teach myself fine woodworking. My inspirations, um, guys like Alan Peters, Sam Maloof, and reading books of Tag Frid, and Krenov all inspired me to go further and to try harder. And I found that I could do it. Where do I get my ideas from? Well, that's a tricky one. I mean, I'm, I'm down here on the beach in front of the cliffs at Eastbourne today, and just being out here away from the workshop for a few hours, it sets the mind free and I'm thinking of all sorts of different shapes. And something will come to mind. I've got a project on at the moment where I've got free reign over a small item of furniture. I have no idea when I, where I'm going to go with it and today is a chance to, to break free a bit and come up with some ideas. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I got into YouTube, it was a bit of a joke really. And I was uh, woodworking, I'd occasionally find something that I, I didn't know how to do and I didn't have in any of the books that I might have. So um, a friend of mine said, look on YouTube, everything's on there. So I started looking at YouTube and I saw some really quite scary things, people doing really dangerous things with power tools, but I also found some great stuff too and, and learnt some stuff from there. And uh, it was really as a joke that I made some videos to begin with, kind of taking the mickey of some of the worst of the videos that were out there for woodworkers. And it was only meant for friends and family really but other people started to, to look at it and subscribe to the channel. And uh, I thought, well, if it's popular as a joke, I wonder what it would be if I did it seriously. And I couldn't keep up the joke because <laughs> some people would have found it offensive, I'm sure, in this world where everyone finds offense with all sorts of things. So I decided to do it properly and set up a, a YouTube channel where I'd be teaching people how to get into woodworking and how to do various joints and hopefully achieve more than they could when they started watching. And I think I've achieved that. What's coming up in the near future? I have a few ideas. Well, actually I have hundreds of ideas I'd like to do, but uh, fitting them in is difficult and knowing which order to do them is difficult. I do have a constant stream of World of Woods videos, which I'm really enjoying doing. Uh, finding out for myself about lots of different woods that are out there for woodworkers to use and also telling other people about them. 
I think it's nice, there's nothing like it on YouTube as far as I've ever found. So I think it's a nice resource to have there. So I'll continue doing that. I also like doing different joints and trying different joints for the first time. I've been doing a number of Japanese joints recently and uh, trying to do them for the first time and film it as well for YouTube is, uh, <laughs> is interesting because when you do a joint for the first time you rarely do it perfectly. And it's good to show people that you need to practice things before they go really well. The future, well, I'm enjoying doing the YouTube. It's tough, there aren't many financial rewards from it, so I struggle from that point of view. But the enjoyment of the interaction with viewers is, is so great that uh, I'd like to keep doing it as long as I can. I also like teaching one-to-one, -one, and uh, although I don't have the, the energy to do too much of that, uh, I am doing it and really enjoying that. And I'd love to get out to lots of shows and I'd like to do some more shows as well. Not necessarily the, the, the YouTube shows and the maker shows, but the craft shows and things like that. Because I'm interested in all sorts of crafts and I really enjoy seeing people do things, uh, weaving for example, um, flint napping, green woodworking, stuff which I'm not doing myself and probably won't do in the future, but I really enjoy seeing other people doing it and getting an idea of how it's done. So, enjoying that side of life. Thank you.